I'll be reading John 21, 1 through 6. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And on this wise shoot himself, there was Simon Peter and Thomas called Didymus, Didymus and Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee and the sons of Zebedee and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter saith unto them, I go a fishing. They say unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately, and that night they caught nothing. But when morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said unto them, Children, have ye any meat? They answered him, No. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw in for the multitude of fish is. Yeah. Brother Kenny, we've got a slideshow up there. I think it's entitled Sermon. Good morning to everyone. If you were uh, hoping to hear a great lesson by Brother Dale this morning, I'm sorry. You're going you're gonna to get to hear me uh, stand up here and tell fish stories. So, uh, but hopefully there'll be a little spiritual application to go along with some of that. I was uh, sitting on the couch this past week, and the phone rang, and it was Brother Steve, and he said, uh, he said I want to go fishing this weekend. I said, okay, let's do that. And we decided what we were going to fish for, and we decided we'd have to get up pretty early Saturday morning and be there when the sun came up. So we did. I don't like getting up early on Saturday morning, but... Uh, we were there at Lake Gunnersville when the sun came up yesterday, and uh, I tied a lure on and I cast, and uh, I reeled in, and there was no fish on my line, and Brother Steve cast the other way, and he reeled in, and there was no fish on his line either, so we packed up our gear, and uh, we headed back for the house. It was a good trip, but uh, we didn't catch anything. Does that sound just a little bit silly? You know, one of the things that you learn about fishing is uh, persistence or patience. The fish aren't running to you when you arrive at the lake. You have to keep on and keep on and keep on. And, uh, you know, I was thinking about that the other day. How many times have we approached spiritual matters kind of like that fish story? You know, we, we talk to our neighbor and we say, hey, why don't you come to church with me? And they say, no, I'm busy. And that's it. We don't ask them again. It's like that fishing trip where you cast one time and you say, well, I invited them one time in 2006. And we do that. We think we've done our job and we don't have to keep on trying. So, I guess number one of the, the three things I'll bring to you this morning, persistence really, really pays off in spiritual matters. Especially right now when it's, uh, when it's tougher. People don't want to gather in groups and uh, the things that we would uh, normally be doing, maybe we're doing less of or, or not doing at all. All right. What can we be doing? I, I went out and visited some folks uh, just a couple of days ago that hadn't been here in a long time. Uh, persistence in those things. Like I said, not just a one-time thing. Uh, our care groups aren't meeting now. I, I mentioned that to some folks the other day. I'm like, can we figure out a way to do this? But you know what we can do? While you're sitting at home this afternoon, instead of at evening worship service, write somebody a card. Make a phone call to somebody. Let's, uh, let's bring that encouragement back that we've lost at this time. 
All right? Who can we meet up for lunch? Uh, I know uh, as soon as Brother Jim Gilbert gets back into town, I'm going to add him to my list again. He always enjoys some company, and I know there's plenty of others that uh, we need to catch up with and encourage and invite. I threw that bullet in there. We, we were supposed to have Youth Devo tonight, but that got bumped up a week. Who can you invite to that next Sunday evening? Of course, in place of Sunday evening worship, so everybody who's sitting here would certainly be welcome to be at that. I think I've got enough hot dogs and hamburgers already over in the Family Life Center to feed every one of you. So we, we need to keep on encouraging that way. So number one, uh, persistence. Persistence. And sometimes, it don't matter how many times when you're out fishing, how many times you cast, the fish just say, that's not what I'm after today. I'm looking for something different. I'm looking for something else. Hmm. Phone call. So, have you tried another lure? I won't ever forget, and this, this one's a true fish story. Uh, Brother Charlie Merrill and I were going fishing. This has been a long time ago. And uh, we pulled in at the bait shop, and he said, do you have, I don't know, a certain kind of lure? And I was like, no, I don't have that, but I'm good. I've got a tackle box full of stuff. And he said, no, that won't work. He said, you've got to have this kind of lure, or you won't catch a thing all day. I said, that doesn't quite sound right, but all right, Brother Charlie, I'll trust you. Let's go in the store and buy what I need. So we went in the store, and they didn't have that kind of lure. And I'm still doubting, you know, I'm, I'm playing the role of Thomas here. This ain't right. I can catch a fish. Well, we get to Lake Gunnersville, and I'm standing in a large crowd of people who are reeling in fish after fish after fish after fish. And I'm standing there dropping my jaw thinking, Brother Charlie was right. I didn't have the shiny, glitter-filled lure that I had to have, and nothing that you see up there on that slide would help me at all. So how are we reaching out spiritually? You know, there's, there's ways that used to work, but maybe they don't work anymore. Are we changing as people are changing? You know, when I first came to Farley a long, long time ago, you could get a cassette tape of the Sunday morning sermon. How many of you have even touched a cassette tape in the last five years? You know, times change. So uh, if you want to hear this sermon and you're not here today, you're going to find it on YouTube. That's the way folks uh, catch the latest videos now is uh, on their cell phone. So as times change, We've got to be willing to change with them. You know, Brother Dale turned me on to something new that uh, I had not really followed at all, didn't have a clue about. He and his brother do this thing called a podcast, and you might as well have used a Chinese word up there, and I said, what's that? How do I get that? And he showed me how to find that on my phone, and uh, some of these young folks are into that stuff. It's new and it's different and it's strange to us old folks, but that's how we're reaching out to the younger people. Uh, the golfs aren't here this morning, but I'll, I'll pick on Rebecca anyway. She manages our church Instagram account. You know, there's always new ways, different ways of reaching out. What other lure do you have in your tackle box that... Uh, that you can add to that list. What can you do that we're not doing yet? Uh, all right. So are we tracking? Two things so far. Persistence. When we're reaching out, we've got to keep on and keep on and keep on and keep on until we get those folks in and we get them interested in Jesus and he, what he has to offer. Number two on that list, sometimes it's not a standard means of doing it. We've got to reach out using 
new and exciting in different ways. And sometimes it's a different location. We were headed down to Ditto Landing the other day and Jacob said, let's drive on past Ditto Landing and go to another spot. And in my mind, I thought of that spot and the shallow water and how many times I've hung a lure on a stump there and I thought, mm, I don't know about this. But okay, we'll try this. And we got there and within an hour we'd caught five fish. <laughs> Sometimes just doing what you're doing in a different spot means all the difference. You know, I've been talking to people at work and those half dozen folks in my inner circle at work don't seem interested. Now I'm going to talk to folks in my neighborhood. I'm going to, when I'm out at the mailbox and I see the neighbor out at his mailbox, I'm going to talk to him. Where can you reach out differently? I appreciate uh, the time that our elders put into thinking about where we send money to. We've got so many things. If you've looked at our 2021 budget, we're reaching out to some new places that we've never reached out to before and we're trying to support works in foreign countries, but as much as we do that, what can you do in Huntsville, Alabama? What can you do in Lacey's Spring, Alabama? We can have such an impact. Uh, Some of these are some of the same things I threw up on previous stuff, but uh, appreciate uh, always appreciate folks that are willing to try and do different things. Uh, we'd thrown ourselves out there on a new website a while back, and then it had went nowhere, and we had Ladies' Day last year still on there being announced, and I'm like, hmm. And I appreciate uh, Nicole Glenn saying, hey, I could keep the website updated. So uh, folks that are, are, are able and willing to jump in and do different things, and uh, I know a lot of this time out this morning, I've talked about that, but how many hours a day do you spend on this gadget? You know, my, my phone popped up this morning and it said I averaged four hours and eight minutes a day on this last week. Of course, a lot of that is I work from home now, and this is life. I've got to dial into this meeting and dial into that meeting, and I spend a lot of time on the phone. But these young people are spending a lot of time on there, and they're playing games, and they could be being such a positive influence, a positive outreach. And I'm not saying just listening to sermons online, but when you're doing these things on the internet, are you putting yourself out there as a positive role model? Are you saying positive things? Or are you getting out on the internet and complaining about things? You know, this, this has been a, a great opportunity this past few months for complaining. You know, I don't like quarantining. I don't like working from home. I don't like wearing a mask. I don't like the way the election went or this or that. I mean, there's so many things that you can say I don't like, but how many times are you getting on there and saying, let me tell you about the good things that are going on here. Let me encourage you to be a part of this or that. So I want to encourage you this morning to look for those opportunities and to see what you can add to that list. So I'm going to leave you with those three fish stories that have a spiritual application this morning. Number one, again, persistence. Keep on and keep on and keep on reaching out to those folks that are your friends, that are your neighbors. Try a different tactic. Try a different way of, of encouraging and reaching out and show them what, uh, what you have to offer within the pages of the Bible that you have uh, been encouraged by. And uh, again, number three, try a different location. Reach out somewhere where you haven't before.
Maybe, uh, maybe the one that needs to be encouraged is, is me this morning by your response to the invitation. Maybe you need to put Christ on in baptism. Maybe you need to come forward and uh, request, the, request the prayers of the congregation. If, if we can uh, meet your needs in any way, please come as we stand and sing.